this day when we celebrate the gift of our children and youth and recognize our graduates, we greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are so grateful to have the Macedonian Moravian congregation, as well as their pastor, Zach Thies, join us for worship today. It's kind of neat to think that what began as our asking Zach for some musical help turned into the creation of a joint worship experience for our two congregations. And I find it especially meaningful to welcome the Macedonia folks since my grandfather once served as your pastor. And Macedonia is where my family worshiped for six or seven years of my early life. So today is a special time to welcome our brothers and sisters at Macedonia. In your online bulletin today, you'll see a list of all of our graduates, and we especially celebrate our high school graduates, Jack Johnson and Ann Spencer Pratt, and you will hear more about our graduates later in our service. Our missions committee is sponsoring an exciting program during June called Lifting Up Our Community. Each week of June, a different Winston-Salem community organization will be highlighted with ways that we can support them. And this week, we begin with Bookmarks, our neighbor across the street, whose healthcare workers' book drive will be featured. And you can find about about this effort by using the link that is included in your bulletin today. And also note the needs of Sunnyside Ministry, as well as City with Dwellings, will be supported with drop-off days for both of these ministries that are listed in your bulletin as well. And we certainly thank our missions committee for coordinating this effort. Our prayer requests from both Calvary and Macedonia are for our country, for shut-ins and those who are feeling so isolated during this time, for God's wisdom and blessing for the church that we might bring Christians together, and that the love of Christ might reign in our hearts. We also remember Calvary members Richard Swing, Bill Hampton, and Butch Goforth as they continue to recover from surgeries. Let us now worship our God together.
Our hymn of praise this morning is found in your online bulletin, or it is hymn 719 in the blue Moravian Book of Worship. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. I invite you now to join me in praying the liturgy for education found on either page 127 in your blue book of worship or page 3 of your, lit or of your bulletin. We praise you, O Lord. We give thanks to you with our whole heart. Great are your works, full of honor and majesty, and studied by all who delight in them. The works of your hands are faithful and just. Your precepts are trustworthy. Our reverence for you is the beginning of wisdom. You are to be praised forever. Knowing Creator, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, we praise you for the wisdom, power, and love displayed in the natural universe and in humanity, whom you have placed within it to care for it and nurture it. All glory to you, omniscient God. Light of the world, we praise you for being the eternal truth. All glory to you. 
revealer of the deep things of God. We praise you for your gifts of awe and wonder, which lead us on the path of true wisdom. All glory to you, Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God of vision and wisdom, we confess our short-sightedness and folly in our search for knowledge and understanding. For our pride in pursuing and using knowledge in ways that make us think we are superior to others, we ask your forgiveness. For our misuse of science and technology, leading to the oppression of people and the abuse of creation, we ask your forgiveness. For our failure to ask hard questions and our willingness to be satisfied with easy answers, for our ignorance of history and tradition, and for our stubborn resistance to new insights of both heart and mind. We ask your forgiveness. We neglect the study of Scripture, the foundation of all true learning. Although your splendor has illuminated our path, we have chosen to walk in darkness. Although your guidance is always available, we have relied upon our own will. Although you have given us wise counsel, inspired writers, and thoughtful teachers, we have turned to our own ways. Gracious God, you forgive us through Jesus Christ. In humble acknowledgement of your love revealed in him, we give you thanks and pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Divine Teacher, to you we commend all who learn Infants tasting and touching, children exploring in play, youth testing and challenging, and adults continuing the quest. Bless our learning with your spirit. In the disciplined mastery of subject and skill, in the reflection on life experience, in the practical wisdom of long years. Bless our learning with your spirit at every age and in every circumstance of life. Bless our learning with your spirit. Give patience and understanding to those who teach. Give perseverance and openness of heart and mind to those who learn. Bless our learning with your spirit. Spirit of truth, to you we commend all of the educational ministries of the church. Guide us in the search of the scriptures, in the study of creation, and in the pursuit of truth. Give to parents your wisdom and thoughts, that with love and understanding they may guide to Christian maturity the young lives entrusted to their care. May congregations nurture faith in children, youth, and adults. Hear our prayer, Spirit of Truth. Bless all of those responsible for education in our community and country teachers and administrators, custodians and clerks, students and families, for their gifts and their service. We give you thanks for all the diversity of human study and knowledge, for science and art, for literature and drama, for labor and play, for all of the teaching experiences of life. We give you thanks.
to the God of lasting wisdom, to the God of relentless change, to God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to the church in Rome, Present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. God calls each of us to give of ourselves that we might be vessels of his love and grace in the world. And in this time when we are separated physically, we are learning new ways to serve and to offer ourselves to God and to each other. The Calvary and Macedonia congregations are grateful for your continued financial support of our ministries during this time. Remember that you can mail your contributions to both church offices or you can use the online giving services on each congregation's website. And again, we thank you for responding to God's love in so many generous ways.
star of the morning, we thank you for giving your life for us, for your infinite love, for your unconditional grace. May we respond by giving of ourselves to you and to our world. So use us and use our gifts, we pray, that we may share this good news that you have given to us. For we ask these things in your name. Amen. The scripture passage this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on the earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. So today we acknowledge and celebrate our incredible, incredible group of children and youth, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, neighborhood children, any child in your life at both of our congregations. We close yet another school year, which is one, it's been a year we'll never forget. We would like to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for your prayers, dedication, love, support, and commitment to our youngest members, as well as to the overall Christian education of our churches and our province. It takes a village, and we are blessed with a wonderful village. Each year you are called upon to do myriad tasks, serve in a variety of ways, and offer your time and talents to the glory of God through your participation with our youngest members. This morning, we honor each of you and your gifts. Let's take a moment to acknowledge many of our activities that require hours of prayerful dedication each year. The members of our Christian Education Committee and our youth ministry teams. Sunday school teachers and craft leaders. Nursery workers, children's choir leaders, summer mission and vacation Bible school leaders. Those who teach music to our children. Laurel Ridge staff, planning teams, counselors, and M staff, Calvary at the Table programming leaders, as well as those who have lovingly planned and prepared our meals, helped serve, and helped clean up. Those of you who have planned for and taught weekly or monthly Bible studies or opened your home for circles, small groups, or gatherings. Those who have or are currently serving on on and organizing our RYC, our Regional Youth Conference for the province, on behalf of all of our churches. Those who help with our Kids Hour of Power at Macedonia. If you have helped cook, bake cookies, make hot chocolate, plan, costume, run lights, direct, sing with angels, shepherd the shepherds, helped memorize lines, carried a lamb, made a prop run sound, or set up microphones and mini stages for our children's pageant and Christmas Eve morning star, you're awesome. If you have helped with our preschool activities or our candle tea for our local elementary schools, If you have cut palm fronds out of our palm trees, made palm crosses, or stayed overnight at a lock-in. If you have helped with our family promise program. If you have donated to, promoted, or fasted for 30 hours as part of our 30-hour famine. If you have contributed to our college student program as we seek to maintain connection to to those of our youth that are in college. And finally, If you have prayed for the continued growth of our Christian formation at Calvary and Macedonia Moravians, both as children, youth, and adults, we appreciate you. As you can see, it truly takes a village, or in the case of our two congregations, villages. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you do each and every year, for almost always saying yes when you are asked to do God's work among us. 
At Macedonia, all of our children are at different places in their young lives, uh, spanning the spectrum from literally not walking yet to graduating fifth grade. For Ruth Ann and Madison, Reagan, Luke, Briarly, and Locken. I hope that you will keep them in prayer and seek to interact with them and encourage them in their walks of faith. This year, Calvary is blessed with many young adults completing milestones of education in their lives. We want to highlight several of those for you. In this week's online bulletin and in all of our other weekly and monthly publications, you will find a list of all those Calvary members graduating from graduate school and college. We hope you take a moment to read about all those having finished their educational journeys and about their next steps. As for our children, we want to take a moment to celebrate with our kiddos completing first grade and receiving their adventure Bible. So this year we have Emerson Baker, Andrew Edmiston, Hampton Grubbs, Nora Smith, and Lottie Dale Wiggins. We also take this Sunday to do sort of a Bible catch-up presentation to children of our newest participating families. This year we want to present Bibles to Luke Strassner, Olivia Strassner, Logan Strassner, Leah Strassner, and Felix Stoltz. And finally, we want to especially highlight our two graduating high school seniors this year. While we know that the end of this academic year is not anything like you imagined, we hope you have found joy in some of the small things. Know that we are immensely proud of your accomplishments, miss seeing you on a regular basis on Sunday mornings, and wish you nothing but excitement and God's blessings as you continue on your educational paths. Jack Johnson graduated from Stokes Early College High School, and Ann Spencer Pratt graduated from Reagan High School. We're going to have a, just a quick word of prayer right now. Let's join together. God, we give you thanks for all of the places in our lives which you show up, and particularly for that in the the children and how they are progressing, not only in faith, but just in their growth in general. We pray now over these um, books and educational materials that it will guide all of the hearts to a deeper relationship with you and give them courage, peace, and strength to continue to live with faith and hope and love in your world. For it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. We now have the opportunity, opportunity to specifically pray for those who are graduating, those who are graduating graduate school or college, but especially those who are finishing their high school year. So I hope you will join with me on page nine of your bulletin for our graduation litany. Today, we give thanks and rejoice for the persistence and discipline that have led to the completion of academic work. We are thankful for minds and energy which are gifts of God that bring us to celebrate this day. We give, we give thanks, thanks for teachers and learners, for, for administrators and for encouraging that stimulate our minds and stretch our understanding. We give thanks for knowledge gained through observation, research, experiment, through trial and error until discovery enlightens a path. We give, we give thanks, thanks for educational, educational ventures for studies that lead to the healing of body and calming of troubled, disordered minds. For those thoughts and concepts that lead to mending of relationships between combative and competitive nations, to understanding between different races, races and social classes, and to reconciliation between husband and wife, parent and child. For sciences that help us understand ourselves, for the environment in which we live, and then to free us to be good stewards of universal resources for the wholeness and benefit of humanity, for words enriched with meaning to enhance communication, for understanding of forces shaping our past, through history, literature, philosophy, and classical arts that give us insight to understand the present and the future for artistic training that has power to move the heart as well as the mind, for educators, educators who give their lives to help others learn to overcome physical, 
emotional, economic, and societal limitations. Bless all of those, all that has been learned by these graduates, and may their learning be the seed that will bear fruit in their living, not simply for their gain, but for the benefit of all people. As they have worked to gain knowledge, may each of us discipline ourselves to seek godly wisdom. Remind us to seek first the kingdom of God, that all else might be given to us. Grant that our unending quest for knowledge and wisdom might not lead us to arrogance, intellectual idolatry, self-sufficiency, or false pride, but to enrich Christian faith. Grant that, that our faith, faith may be built on courage to question, question rather than fear of new truths. truths. Give us confidence in the revelation of God through scripture, history, and our risen Lord that motivates us to grasp understanding of all human illumination. Bathe, Bathe us in humility to know that in this, this world, world we will seek to balance our finite scales knowledge and faith that will be united fully only in the coming of your kingdom and we then shall see fully that which shall see only in part. These things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I forgot to acknowledge this morning is Mary Lou Cap Peoples, who is our organist, her father, John Cap, also served the Macedonia congregation, so it's a special day for her as well. Let's join in a time of prayer together. Gracious God, in these moments, may your spirit speak deeply to each one of us, and may your word be spoken and may nothing but your word be heard. Amen. In many ways, I think we stand today between two worlds, or two realities, so to speak, our normal pre-COVID-19 world, and what some have labeled as the new normal that will come in our post-COVID world. You might say that this current reality is much like a twilight zone. It's sort of an in-between time that is undefined, intermediate, and yet to be. Certainly there are things that we appreciate about this in-between time. Many say that they're grateful for a less hectic pace and time to consider whether all the things that we normally do are really helpful or even meaningful. And of course, there are things that we miss or even grieve in this twilight zone too, like the gatherings of God's people for in-person worship, hugging our family and friends, and not constantly worrying about whether to wear a mask or to keep social distance. In today's gospel text from Matthew, the disciples, much like us, are also in sort of this twilight zone, an in-between time in their relationship with Jesus. You'll recall that many of them have been with Jesus since he called them to follow by the shores of Galilee. And in Matthew's gospel, Jesus' followers have been with him on all kinds of mountaintops. They've experienced on a mountaintop his miraculous power to heal. They've heard his sermon on the mount. Some were with him on a high mountain when they experienced the transformation of his glorified presence as God's son. And some of them have witnessed his death on yet another mountain. At the foot of that same mountain, others looked in and saw an empty tomb at the dawn of the third day. And over a period of 40 days following his resurrection, he's appeared to them in an upper room on a road to the small village of Emmaus and even on the shore of Galilee. They've known mountaintops and they've known valleys in their journey with Jesus over these last years, but this time, this time is different. It's a time of uncertainty because Jesus isn't with them physically. 
and yet he's appearing to them. There's lots of unknowns and unanswered questions. In fact, they really aren't sure what's going to happen next. Many of our graduates this year have been in that similar situation. They faced a sort of twilight time too between what was supposed to happen, proms and award ceremonies and graduation services, plans with family and friends to celebrate. And now, what will happen next? How will things even unfold as we get closer to fall? And the same is true of all of our children and youth who are sad about changes in summer plans. No in-person camps at Laurel Ridge. No in-person reunions with fellow campers or treasured counselors or M staff. No in-person vacation Bible school. Things aren't even certain about summer sports or sports that will begin in the fall. And though we're all grateful for these wonderful opportunities like today to connect virtually, we all know that it's just not the same and we're tired of sitting in front of a computer screen. And it's okay to be sad about all these things because we've lost something in this time, something very special. That's true of all of us, whether we're an older adult who had to cancel a hundredth birthday party or whether we're graduating from high school or moving from elementary to middle school, it's been really hard to leave behind so many of the things that were normal parts of life. And it's okay to feel a little down about that or even feel some anxiety about what's yet to come. So I guess part of what we need to do today is just acknowledge that this time has been hard in many ways and it's not easy to be in this twilight time between what we've always known and experienced and what will be in the future. But I think what gives us hope in that in-between time is knowing that we're not alone in experiencing this because the disciples experienced something kind of similar. Let's try to put ourselves in their shoes for a moment. In today's text, it's close to 40 days after the resurrection. And even though Jesus has told them that there's going to come a time when he will leave, they're, they're still sort of in a fog. You know, like that fog you sometimes experience driving up on the mountain when you can hardly see your feet in front of you. They weren't sure what to expect as they climb this mountain where Jesus told them to go. But when they do get there, Matthew says that on seeing Jesus, some of them worship and some of them doubt. I'm really glad that Matthew didn't try to gloss over the fact that some of them doubted because as much as we love God, as much as we try to trust God in this uncertain time there are times when we doubt there are times when we wonder we may even lose a sense of hope about the future especially when we're having to navigate these COVID waters remember that the disciples had been so dependent on Jesus giving them direction and courage and hope and now as they look to the future, they really aren't sure about anything. Can you imagine what was going through their minds? If Jesus leaves us, what are we going to do? Maybe it was not so much that they doubted Jesus, but they doubted themselves without him. What kind of people would they be? Would they be able to carry on his mission without his physical presence there to guide them? I imagine that it was a scary and even anxious time. They're standing there on that mountaintop with all of their anxieties and their emotions just like we are here gathered by the Spirit, graduates looking forward to the future, children and youth waiting for what they can do this summer, all of us, the living body of Christ, whether in Davie County or 
downtown Winston-Salem wondering what church life, everyday life, what the unknown future is going to look like. So we're all facing this twilight time, regardless of our age or our station in life, and into that reality. That same sort of situation that the disciples face, Jesus gives a commission. He's sending followers into the world to make disciples beginning with their own communities. Listen to his words again. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And listen to this. Teach them to observe all the commands that I gave you. Hmm. Not necessarily what the disciples expected to hear when they got to the mountain, particularly in their time of uncertainty. You want us to do what, Jesus? Make disciples of all nations, baptize and teach and help them to follow your commands? Are you serious? And guess what? God expects no less of us because we too are commissioned and sent even in these uncertain times to carry on the mission. Just because a contagious virus has swept through the land across the globe and changed things a bit doesn't mean that we've suspended our part in fulfilling the Great Commission. The very last verse of our text today contains the key, I think, to how we'll keep pressing forward with our mission even in these twilight times. Because after Jesus sort of lays it all out there and he tells us that he is sending us into the world, there comes this promise of help and of hope. And look, I am with you always, even to the end of time. I'm not going to leave you to figure this out on your own. I'm going to send my spirit to help you fulfill what I'm sending you out to do. No doubt about it. Fulfilling the Great Commission is challenging enough when things are normal. But it's even harder to figure out in the midst of a global pandemic or when we see the civil unrest that's occurred recently on the streets of our communities and our nation. It's a challenging time when people seem so divided over so many things. In some fashion, the world as we have always known it has been sort of turned upside down and yet one thing has not changed. The Great Commission. God still summons us he still calls us to be about the business of sharing the good news of God's love, even in the circumstances we are right now. Rebecca Menron discovered that one afternoon recently when she went to the grocery store that she could still be in mission. She writes, as I was walking in, I heard a woman yell to me from her car, and I walked over, and I found this elderly woman and her husband, and she cracked the window just a little bit more, and she explained to me, nearly in tears, that she and her husband were afraid to go into the grocery store because they were in their 80s, and they were afraid of getting the virus. And since they didn't have family in town, she wondered if I might be willing to help. And through this very small crack in the window, she handed me a $100 bill and her grocery list, and she asked if I would be willing to go in and buy her groceries. And so I did just that, Rebecca said, and I placed them in her trunk and I gave her back her change through that small crack in the window. And it was then that she told me she had been sitting in her car for almost 45 minutes before I arrived, waiting for just the right person to ask for help. Maybe God is using this pandemic 
to remind us that being the church, fulfilling the Great Commission is not just maintaining buildings where we do our Christian thing a couple of times a week, but the commission is figuring out how to creatively be the presence of Jesus Christ in the world in a new way, right where we are, even in this unknown and uncertain time, just trying even in small ways that we don't think are even so grand to do what we're commanded to do. Knowing that regardless of circumstances, we're never left alone to figure all this out by ourselves because the one who commissions us is the same one who promises to equip us. I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Even today's worship experience with two different congregations probably wouldn't have happened in another time. So I guess what I'm saying is whether we are a graduate facing an unknown future, a young person wondering how this is going to affect summer plans, or a church wondering how we're going to continue vital ministry in the days ahead, Whatever the unknown is that we are dealing with, God's not going to leave us. Are we going to be stretched a bit? Absolutely. Will we have to have our minds changed? Will we maybe be uncomfortable every once in a while? I think so. But maybe God's doing a new thing in us so we can reclaim our task, our commission as Christians to tell the world, maybe even in new and creative ways, in ways we never imagined possible before, the story, the unchanging story of God's unconditional love. Maybe in this twilight time between the way things have always been and what they will be, Great Commission is our call to not just inhabit the church, but to be the church. The song we sing at Laurel Ridge Campfires seems even more real today. I hope it will be our prayer as we end this service. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you without blemish before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power before all time and both forevermore. Amen. Oh,